Inside Fever Basketball continues. We've got the general manager, Lynn Dunn, with us. And the offseason is really where you can make your most impact in this role. And right off the bat, you've got a very big decision to make. You're in the process right now of hiring a new head coach for the Indiana Fever. Where are you in that process? Well, Pat, that's my number one challenge this offseason is to find the right leader for this franchise. And I am, I would say I'm right in the middle of it. Uh, I've made... Uh, uh, many um, phone interviews. I've had several uh, follow-ups with phone interviews. I've done research on the candidates that I'm really zeroing in on. I've done some in-person interviews. And I think we're in a, a perfect position now to move forward and get somebody on board early October. Are there key traits you look to identify in people, in coaches, as you go through this search? Definitely. You know, I, I know at this particular time in this franchise, we must get the right leader. We must get the right voice to take this young team to the next level. Uh, whoever this person is must be high energy. They have got to have an enormous amount of energy because we're working from the bottom and we have to come straight up that long climb there. And so it's going to be a 24 seven job. And so you have to have a hunger, you have to have an energy, uh, but at the same time, you have to have a voice and great leadership skills. Um, and I also think one of the, the priorities that I've set for this job is that you've had significant in some capacity, WNBA experience. You know, I I'm, I'm, wouldn't even consider bringing someone in that hasn't coached either as a head or an assistant significantly uh, at this level so that you know what's going on, you know how to deal with pro players, uh, you have connection with pro, pro players. Um, so um, I also think it's got to be a person that connect, that can connect with, with this youth. I don't know, they're... they're anywhere from 20 to, to 30, and uh, in particular, our seven rookies who are, what, age 20, 21, 22, um, it's a different generation. And so uh, the person that I hired has to be a relationship-type person. They've got to really, it's got to be a natural, though. You know, somebody, some coach may say, well, I'll work at it. Well, no, I don't want, I don't want to hear that. I want to know that you, you, you get that. It's automatic. Uh, you're a natural at developing relationships. So might you look at the direction of a coach who has had a lot of experience with young players? Because as you noted, you had seven rookies last year. You've got a bunch more draft picks coming up. This is going to be a very young team again next year as well. Well, hopefully it'll be uh, primarily a young team and maybe we can pick up a couple of free agents that give us a little bit of veteran experience. Uh, but there's no doubt that the, the future of this team is around these five rookies uh, that we drafted last year and their development in the offseason and their ability to connect trust this next staff. This next staff has to really come in and connect with this young group. Um, they have to trust each other, believe in each other, and then they have to develop. Uh, the coaches have to be able to develop the, the skills of our rookies um, because the, you know, the, the future's so bright for them. They just need teach them, develop them, uh, you know, make them better. And so trying to find the right person and the right staff to do that is my challenge. You mentioned a relatively quick timeline. Why is it important to you to get somebody in here for a good majority of this offseason? Well, I think our players uh, now need to see who's in charge. You know, you need to have the fall uh, for the head coach to re to connect. You know, uh, we've got four players overseas. That head coach may have to fly overseas, make the connection wherever the players are. Go to go, go to where Lexi is. Go to where Kelsey Mitchell is. Invest this fall into reconnecting with our players, and that takes time and that takes effort. And then, of course, we've got the the uh, the next draft coming up, and and teams are starting to practice in October. So the head coach and, and I will be out watching practices, and then before you know it, in November, we're playing games. And there's some early games um, in November that we need to be there. Speaking of the rookie class you've got and this young group and, and trying to connect with them, uh, what are some of your goals for those players as they either go overseas or stay here in the U.S.? What are you looking um, from your group to kind of take that jump from rookie to second season? Well, I'm, I'm of the philosophy that everyone, uh, veteran and rookie, 
come back better in at least one area. You know, you don't have to come back. Don't don't pick five. Don't pick, you know, pick one key area. Um, and let, let's take Nalissa N- Smith for an example. Okay, we know that Nalissa was not comfortable going left. Okay, you come back with a left hand. You come back comfortable going left. Um, so that that's a challenge uh, selecting the area that you want them to improve at and and then making sure that it happens. Um, And so that's where the coaches will come into play with following up, with keeping in touch with them Um, and also come back, you know, leaner, fitter, stronger, just better. In your experience as a coach and certainly in this position, can the year one to year two for a player like Nalissa, all of your rookies, but especially a player that has the ceiling and the ability like Nalissa, can that be an area where they perhaps make their biggest jump of their careers? I think so. I really do. I think after this season, um, the five rookies, even the seven rookies, found out how fast the game is, how physical the game is. And so I was happy to hear that Lexi decided not to go overseas. She's already hired a personal trainer. She knows she has to get stronger physically stronger and so she's going to spend this off season working on the ball handling skills and working on getting stronger and I think we'll see market improvement. How impactful can that be to have players that are able to stay stateside able to come here to Indiana and and maybe get to work with you a little bit more and and the new coach a little bit more uh, one-on-one versus going overseas? I think it's huge. I've never been uh, a believer that going overseas makes you better. You go overseas to make money. It's an additional way to make income. I get it. I get it. Um, but do you really get better over there? You know, do you have a personal trainer over there? Are you spending time on fundamentals and individual development? It depends, and it rarely happens. Um, if you stay in the States and you stay here in the city and train with our people, then I know you're going to get better. If you stay here in the States and you hire a personal trainer and you're invested daily uh, in getting better, then I know you're going to get better. So um, I'm not that big on going overseas. And when I found out that some of our players were not going overseas, I was thrilled. One of the biggest dynamics that happens in the offseason, especially for a franchise that's in the position that the Fever are in, is one that unfortunately you have no control over. I'm talking the draft lottery. Uh, But obviously (laughs) it's so impactful. Uh The Fever have had some really bad luck. You've had some decent luck, though, over the course of of your career. Um, how, How impactful could getting that number one overall pick be? Well, it would be huge. I mean, the, the, the good news is, though, we're going to get one of the top three picks. Uh, we may get one, we may get two, we may get three. We would love to get one. We absolutely have the, the biggest, best chance because 44% of the balls are ours. Um, so if we're ever going to get the first pick, this, this should be it. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to get too upset over that because I know how good this draft is, and I know that there are three players there. Um, and we're going to get one of them, and all, any one of them will have an impact on our program. So if we get the first pick, yay. If we get the second or third, we'll take the very best player available. We'll have a more in-depth conversation with you once you know exactly when you're picking and maybe we get a little yeah. bit closer. And I think that's December, maybe. Somewhere around there we'll know. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. And But just kind of looking at it from a 20,000-foot view, you've got another couple of first-round picks, an early second-round pick. I mean, do you feel like – You've got the arsenal here to make another big splash like you did last mm-hmm. year. Well, I like to say we've got one. <laughs> I'm confident we're going. We got one, seven, and thirteen. Um, and in this draft, there's that's significant. Um, so once again, uh, we can make a splash with some outstanding talent. And somebody may say, "Well, gosh, can you keep all of that talent?" Maybe not, but. They certainly have value, trade value, um, you know, so I have to think about them as assets and investments, not only for now, but in the future. It seems like you've been pretty aggressive in every move you've made so far, you know, getting those four first round draft picks last year. I'm sure you're taking that uh, approach um, to coaching. Is, is, is that what you feel like this franchise needs here as you put this uh, path together? It's going to take some patience, but also some aggressiveness, too. Absolutely. And, and I hope I showed how aggressive I was last year and I'm going to continue to be aggressive. We're not going to get back in the playoffs being passive. You know, we're not going to get back in the playoffs and win more games just standing back and hoping everybody waits on us. So I've got to I've got to have a plan to, to, to push the envelope uh, <clears throat> to get us back on track. We've got to get the talent. We've got to get the leadership and the leadership comes from both players um, and, and the coaches. Um, and so 
so uh, I think we're going to look at the free agency area too. Wanted to ask you about that, and again, we'll have a, a deeper conversation as we get closer, but is this the type of free agent class that you feel like you maybe can make a splash with? Um, it's an interesting free agent class, um, and, and then it's probably not as strong as, say, the draft is. Um, but we're in a situation this year where we do have some cap, salary cap money, and last year we didn't. We were tied up with salaries, and we didn't have any flexibility to really go after some of the some of the best free agents. But we have a little bit more money now, and so I may focus my energies on a perimeter free agent, 25 to 28, a post free agent age 25 to 28, veteran, knows how to be a pro, can set the example for our young kids. Um, and so I'll be aggressive in that area too. How helpful is it for you to have the full off season here and, and to not be coming in kind of midway through like you did last year? Well, and I've learned a lot <laughs> since I think February the 17th. Uh, I've studied that giant CBA book and I've reached out for help to other G GMs and I've reached out to the league. So I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm more comfortable uh, now going into this free agency um, <clears throat> than I would have been three or four months ago. Um, um, and I, I think that I'll be prepared. Um, I think I'll be aggressive. Um, I think the Indiana Fever will show that they're serious about moving this franchise back into the playoffs. Um, I know how to recruit. Um, I know how to evaluate talent. So I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to hiring a head coach that can be my partner, that can help me do the things that we need to do. We're on the same page. That person is aggressive. That person wants to push the envelope. That person has connections with agents, uh, with former players. And so together... Uh, we can get this done. And that's, of course, how you had success as a head coach here. It's why your banner is in the rafter. It's why there's a, a, a championship banner up there as well. But when you think about what you're trying to build here and bring to this franchise, how often do you think back to those glory days, if you will? And, and does that light a fire? Does it motivate you? Well, I look back to the things that Kelly Kroskoff and I did together uh, to move that franchise to a point where we were a legitimate championship contender. Um, absolutely, we had Tamika Catchings, but we had to build around her. Um, I, a lot of people don't realize that Kelly sent me on an around-the-world trip uh, to, to talk to free agents and to reconnect with some of our players. Uh, you know, I got on a plane and started out and I was gone two weeks around the world. Turkey, Hungary, uh, Australia, Amsterdam, I don't know where all I went, but that was my job. And I know what it takes to, to get this. That's how we got Tammy Sutton Brown. That's how we got Katie Douglas. Um, you know, you have to do the work. You know, you can't just sit back and it doesn't just happen. You have to do the work. And when you talk to the Fever fans, I think most of them really understand kind of where things are. They're excited about the young players. They, of course, just like you, uh, want more wins. But there just seems to be a lot more optimism and positivity around the fan base in general. And as we close this conversation here, uh, what would your message be to those fans, many who were there when you were here as a coach, and in a lot of ways trying to get some of those fans back and, and build the fan base have even more. Mm -hmm. Well, for those fans that are still with us, and there are some that have been here the entire, I call them the founding fans. Stick with us. Stay with us. Um, be patient with us. Give us a chance to, to, to work, work this three-year plan. And for those fans that have left us, come back. Come on back. You know, you, you know what it's like to be in a championship uh, a playoffs. You know what it's like to be in the playoffs. You know the excitement. Um, so come on back and give us another shot. Uh, stay with us. Uh, you're going to love these rookies. You're going to love their energy. And you're going to love the new coaching staff. Well, Lynn, thank you for your time, for your perspective. I know the fans always love hearing from you. And, of course, got a big decision coming up. We'll look forward to talking to you once that decision's solidified. I'll keep you posted, Pat. <laughs>